Hey guys, it's Sean O'Connell, the managing editor at Cinema Blend and co-host of the Real Blend podcast here with another bonus episode of the Real Blend show because we got time with a terrific filmmaker who has an outstanding movie that's available for you to stream right now on Hulu. It's Brian Duffield who has a movie that we've been talking about on the show called No One Will Save You, starring Caitlin Deaver. Um, And one of the reasons why we definitely wanted to have Brian on the show after the movie had been out for a little while is because we wanted to take a deep dive into spoilers. So I do want to warn people, if you've clicked on this video uh, at this point now and you are a fan of the show and wanted to check out this bonus content, but you haven't yet seen uh, No One Will Save You, you should stop right now. Head on over to Hulu, use your subscription uh, to watch the episode uh, or watch the movie. It's a very tight 93 minutes. It moves like a freight train um, because we're going to get into some really specific stuff talking about the making of the film and things that happen in the film and especially things that happen to Caitlin's character. So make sure that you are up to speed before you continue on with this conversation. Uh, Jake has given his review of the film on the backside of the interview. I'm going to give you a little bit more about my thoughts about the movie as well, too. And then you, I want to hear feedback from you guys in the comments down below of what you think about not just the movie, but Brian as a guest uh, and the show in general. So without further ado, let's throw it right to a bonus episode of the Real Blend podcast. It's Brian Duffield coming on the show to discuss his new sci-fi thriller, No One Will Save You. I'm very excited. Um, your movie is so completely kick-ass. I loved it so much. It blew me oh, away. Oh, cool. Dude. Thanks, man. Oh, it's incredible. Um, and what I'm really happy about is that we're getting an opportunity to dive into spoilers and talk freely about it. You know, obviously in the run up to it, you were trying to protect as much as you can. Now yeah. it's out. We've been telling people left and right to go see this, you know, as quickly as possible. And now we want to get into specifics with you, if you don't mind opening up sure. about everything. So yeah. um, I want to start. You know, there's so much conversation um, about how the film has next to no dialogue and then, you know, the one big <laughs> yeah. line that that Caitlin gets. But I, I think that that's incorrect because I think the aliens have a lot of dialogue. Yes, sir. Um, and I want to know um, what you know about that dialogue, how much of that is translated. And specifically, I want to ask you what they say in the moment before they send her back down to Earth after they learn her <laughs> truths. Oh, well, I won't answer one of those questions. <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, no. A good, a good amount. Um, I think it was really important to us that they come across as intelligent. And, and so one of the first things that I talked to Chris and Will, our sound guys about, uh, like, I think in our very first initial conversation was I didn't know how they sounded. I liked the idea that there was a music to it. Um, and I liked the idea that it was, it would be multi-toned and when it's, multi-tone my you know my human brain went that each tone is a sentence so Mm -hmm. when they're talking they're just it's like paragraphs that they're just shooting out at each other all the time um and and so that was something that we ran with so it's like when they are talking uh they're just kind of it's like books uh going back and forth um and that was i think in my in my brain like a a subtle way to uh, like talk about at least with the grays that there there was they were hyper intelligent. Um, and so then it was just a lot of exploration of that. And I think a lot of the time when they do talk to Caitlin, I think they're literally telling her what's about to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and I know a lot of it to us as well was that the idea that they're, they're this uh, weirdly faith-based species And so a lot of it being, you know, uh, about what their faith was telling them to do kind of thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so like, so like we, the big one that we call daddy long legs, you know, he's more um, physical with his uh, hands, like doesn't talk as, as much, but like, you know, like his hands, So we were like, that's like, it should feel like very like religious and, and culty. And, you know, and so like, anytime you see some of the possessed people, they kind of had like their Sunday morning praise and worship hands. <laughs> and it was supposed to, originally it was supposed to be, they were also doing it, but it just felt like way too much like voguing um, when it was people. <laughs> <laughs> it was when my Caitlin, Caitlin Deaver sent me um, a TikTok uh, last night of people that had put Vogue over Daddy Long Legs rocking on the backyard. <laughs> that was that was cool. We joked about it on set like that'd be really awesome. So, kind of cool. 
but yeah, that was the idea is that they were um, explaining to her what was going on. And, and in a, in a, in a context that was probably faith-based and also that they don't think what they're doing is nefarious. Mm. Like, it's kind of like, it's like when you, when I take my dog to the vet, so, so it gets a shot, you know, it's, uh, the dog is very upset. Um, and, uh, but it's for its own good. Okay. And the dog will never understand that. And that was kind of the logic we took with the aliens where they were just like, you need this, you need us. Uh, and without us, you're going to die and be sick, um, which is a fun twist on the the genre, I think. I hope that's fascinating. That's fascinating. <laughs> you know, Brian, I, I want to talk to you about your sound design, because I think yeah. uh, obviously sound design is a really key factor here. Um, you have to rely on sound design essentially to build tension and obviously with your shots and everything like that. And a lot of the sound design, I know sound design can, can be done in post and things like that, but because it's so such a big part of the story and, and all the noises and the things that, that the character is hearing, how, how much of that is actually happening on set for Caitlin? Um, does she Very have little? Yeah. OK, so how what, so what do you what what is your direction to her about those specific pieces of sound design that are going to be then added in? Um, I'm just curious how that process works. Yeah, it was, you know, I mean, it's the classic you hear something over there <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> Uh, and I think part of what was fun about the alien dialogue is that, you know, Caitlin's probably who I talked to the least about that because there's no world in which she understands any of it. Right. Um, and so that being a big component where I could be like, he's, you know, he's squatted in front of you and he's talking but, you know, for her, it's just the fact that he's in the house at all and is an alien. That's the problem. So, like, anything he's saying is terrible. Mm. Um, you know, mm. I joke that, like, if any anything that's not supposed to be in your house is in your house, it instantly becomes bad. Like, if I got home and Tom Hanks was in my living room just <laughs> watching TV because he let himself in. It would take me a while to be like, this is OK. <laughs> <laughs> and so it's just even that idea of. um Caitlin didn't have to worry about what they were saying. Didn't have to worry about like stepping on their lines or anything like that. Um, and then a lot of it too, you know, the great thing about shooting, uh, you know, there's a very little amount of, of green screen at the very end that Caitlin's in. Um, but for the most part, she's just in the house. Uh, and so a lot of it is, um, you know, either, just the noise that she is making, or it's just, you know, if we're trying to make her eyeline follow something, it's, right. just, it's just like some like me, it's just like walking and she's following me <laughs> um, or like a, a PA or something. And so it, that it's the, the very specific sound design wasn't really uh, there, but it also, the sound design was really written into the script. So she also had that to go off of. When you say written into the script, like like it like it just says like she hears this sound or this door pounds. And I feel like or... a lot of um, like uh like Batman cartoon sound effect writing. They you know they would just be like this is the sound of their like the big one in the script was their feet. Um, mm. when they walked in, you know, we talked a lot about the fact that they were barefoot and there's like a kind of like a flipper quality. Like they're not being quiet. They're not stalking they're just kind of like slapping around and, and making noise because and then the the it gets worse when she realizes that if they want to be quiet they can be quiet but yeah. they just and then it's, it's a problem because she's like well they don't even care enough about me to pretend to be quiet um uh so that was that was a that was a, that was very specific in the script but then even like um i guess this is this is very spoilery um but uh she you know, injures severely injures an alien with a uh, schoolhouse bell. Yes, and uh, that was something in post where Gabe, our editor, just kept adding the little bell sound every time <laughs> that was in play, um, and that wasn't scripted or planned on set, and then just became like a very funny and very kind of like important like recurring sound. And that was just Gabe was like anytime he could put up the bell little a little jingle in there he he would and was like constantly <laughs> delighted um That's awesome. then, and then we hired chris and will and they're just you know freaks 
Like it's, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. And like the other thing that they added that was so cool is uh, I always, in the CG design and, and in the alien design, I always knew like they were going to have like a sonar finger. Um, so when they're walking, they kind of are like putting their finger around and then they hear something, they kind of, the finger goes and then they kind of snap their heads towards it. Um, and then Chris and Will were like, you know, what if there was like a little sound that kind of went with the radar? And then sometimes that sound stops and you're like, oh, it hurts. Can I swear, by the way? Yes, yes. Okay, cool. please. We actually encourage you. <laughs> I'm always yeah. I'm always terrified that it's just going to be uh, beeped out everywhere. Um, no curse. Uh, we also there's a hidden F bomb in the movie that the MPAA did not notice or catch that we are also very proud of. That no one's wait, more. How did no. you do that? <laughs> I, wait, always, is... I always assume it's subtitled in, in in there, and we kept saying like, "Don't subtitle this instance." Uh, but there is it's there's an f-bomb in, and it's uh it's not caitlin which is is even funnier um wait is it, what, the, is driver? it like on the tv is it the driver who almost hits her no oh okay so that, that's the only question you get because i'm not gonna tell ah, it's really funny wait, but aren't you allowed to have one f-bomb in pg-13 yeah but i think even if you were pg-13 they would say the the language was one of the reasons why you're pg-13 and it's not in ours at all oh, and so the wow. mpa when they came back were basically like there's no profanity and we were like <laughs> cool. is it I mean, is it is audible alien? though bomb? <laughs> no brian you can't uh, drop something say. like that someone will, someone will find it there's very few opportunities where it could be <laughs> we're gonna bring up um, every scene <laughs> uh, but uh <laughs> um That's and cool. then uh, what was it saying oh but then they were like oh it'd be great if the finger had like a radar sound and then like it would it like if even if they were in a different room it could stop and you'd go like oh crap did they hear did they know mm. i'm here and they added that and it's so effective in the movie like he's in like a different room of the house and you just hear that like and then it's, it's just the bone in his finger like just searching for inf- information um Sound design is everything. It's everything. It's so cool. Like, it, it's yeah. such a massive, massive part of it. It's wow. incredible to hear that. Yeah. Yeah. I could talk about it because we had to, you know, show the movie to people without that. <laughs> and it sucked. It was so <laughs> awful. <laughs> and well, like, without that and without aliens. And then so you're just like, you know, What's it's the like, movie? I, yeah. I, told, I was talking to um, my buddy Wes Ball last night, who's directing the new Apes movie. Um and while we were like, yeah, it's kind of like if you were like told to go on stage and sing and someone was choking you the whole time. <laughs> like, I really can sing. Like, it will sound great. But if you just stop choking me. Yeah. <laughs> but, like, showing people and like showing like friends the movie and you're like, it's just Caitlin screaming at like a dude in a blue leotard. And like, <laughs> like for a while, we just had like pig noises in the movie. They're just like, I don't know if this movie's. Good. And see, that's that's why I miss DVDs, because like I would love like the special features of that, because that's I'd like now having seen the film twice. I'd like to see that version. Yeah. Of yeah. The movie. I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would put it on the DVD, uh, but it was it was so traumatizing where you're just like you're like, you don't want to be the guy in college that was like, you just don't get it. Um, but it was it would be like, no, you don't understand. Like in seven months, it's going to be. Yeah. Cool. And then it's just so hard for people to understand that. That's, and it's, that's sometimes what, it's not. And so yeah. then you get in your head and you're like. Oh, that's Andy Circus's oh, enti- cool. it's Andy Circus's <laughs> entire career. He's yeah. been doing this his entire career. Poor yeah. Yeah. I promise yeah. you it'll be cool. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 really uh, it was and it was really like the last like couple of weeks of making the movie where all of a sudden you're like, oh, it it's effective. Like it was funny. We. um it's been cool that people have been talking about it being scary um, because it wasn't scary ever until it got finished. Um, And like even people that love the movie were like, it's really fun, but it's not scary. And then people have been talking about how scary it is. And we've been like, Oh, Hmm. that's cool. But like, you know, it's, it's just a part of making movies is when you, especially with the sound design, you know, you give those guys like two weeks and you go from being like fun to people really shitting their pants. Yeah. 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 Amazing. Uh, so Brian, about that f bomb. Um, <laughs> you know, I I think there's a difference between wanting to know what happens next and wanting a sequel. Like I love this movie, but I kind of love it on its own, right. and and respectfully don't want anyone to come along and and do part two. But it, I am left wanting to know what happens next. So I am sort of curious as a storyteller. Like, how much do you know? Have you decided 
about what's next for you. Does the story stop after that shot of the aliens hovering over and we cut to black or do you sort of know what the next week is like or year is like? Like, is, is the sequel sort of unofficially written in your head already? Not really, just because I don't know what would happen. Um, but like, I was like, I, like, even like, like, I think Kayla and I have a joke that like the sequel would be like a different, a completely different genre. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I probably would have dialogue <laughs> um, or just <laughs> and songs, rap. probably songs, music, uh, musical. Yeah. Uh, I mean, she's such an amazing musician that it would be worth it. Um, but no, I mean, I think we were always like, no matter how you read the ending, Bryn is in a good place, whether she's physically in a good place or not. Like she's just in a genuinely happy place. And that for us was the the thing about the ending. And then there's a part of me that's like, if I did a sequel, like I would probably have to take that away from her. <laughs> that feels like a bummer. Um, just for like, you know, I can't have a sequel where she's just like happy the whole time. Um, yeah. It's kind of like the, <laughs> the downside of like, Force Awakens when you're like, I'm glad they're back, but it's also kind of a bummer that Han Solo's kid kills him. Um, <laughs> like it's like, oh man, I, I like I like the I like the Ewok ending. Um, I do love that. I do love. I actually do love that scene. I actually think that Han's death is pretty poetic. But I mean, it's, I, it's but, great. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, I, I I really like Force Awakens. Same. Too. But it's like there's like that thing about like there's something nice about like you know I think um, Terry who did uh, Picard season three, yeah. I, he had a quote where it was like, you know, you want to put the toys back on the shelf better than you found them. And I kind of feel like that with, <laughs> with Brynn, where I'm kind of like, if I took her off the shelf, like shit would have to happen to her. And then you're kind of like, but I just kicked her ass for 90 minutes. Like, yeah. <laughs> she can, you know, I think again, not saying no, but there is, um, I like that we leave her and she's so like, she's just twirly and happy. Like, I think um, she's earned, she's earned a little, uh, she's earned a break. She's earned 20, a, yeah. 20 minutes into this movie, I turned to my wife and I said, I couldn't do this just because I can't do this much running. Like she just yeah. runs everywhere. I, 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 <laughs> that was my, I told her the all the whole time. I was like, you, you need to run, like get training. And she's like, I run every day. And I was like, no, it's, di- it's going to be different. <laughs> and then, like, <laughs> a day or two in, she was like, I'm so sore. But like, she said it very excited and was, yeah. was kind of like, like was in a lot of pain. And then like, there's some parts of the movie where she's running and not well. And it's partially because she is just sore and in pain, but it, it works out really. For the character. Well, where you're the like, character. Yeah, it's weird if you'd be like really Tom cruising. And I was really, we were really nervous. because <laughs> um. I hadn't seen her run until the day one was the shot where she's running from the bus. Um, and so I hadn't seen her, her run before. And it's like that nightmare where it's like when you have an adult get cast and they have to ride a bike and then you realize they can't ride a bike. Um, and I was just like, I hope like who knows how this is going to go. Um, because there's like people that are like, yeah, I can run. Then you see them and you're like, that is not cinematic. Um, <laughs> it's like that scene in uh, Licorice Pizza when when she goes yeah. to the audition and she's like, yeah, I can speak all these languages. Oh, and yeah, I, I can yeah. ride horses. Um, <laughs> and she, <laughs> but I was just like, there's so much running in this. And if Caitlin is a not so graceful runner, who knows how that will go? And then we did like the first, we did like the first take and she was just hauling ass and we were like, it's a movie. Great. <laughs> like, yeah. like, this is so, and like the studio was like so excited where they were like, oh, wow, she's she can really run. And we were like, yeah, we're going to. I don't even know if that guy could have caught her if he was running after her. So it was <laughs> we were very excited, but we were very scared uh, beforehand. We were like, it's it was great that she just want, crushed it. Yeah, I want to take a swing on something. And, and if I if I whiff it, if it means nothing, I want to reserve the right to jump to another question. Uh, but there's a <laughs> there's a shot that caught my eye um, and I have to believe it means something. It's one, it's one of the very first aerial kind of bird's eye shots um, of mm-hmm. Caitlin after she's kind of practiced her smile and she's driving into town. Yeah. And it feels like there's a, a cloud that you either just caught or you added after the fact. And it's it's disorienting. And I'm wondering if it's there as foreshadowing or was that a happy it, accident? I am pretty sure it's a happy accident cloud. Uh, there was a moment in time where we had like a UFO shadow move across and that just felt like it was too too much. Um, so I don't think we did 
not replacement, but the idea is every time there's a drone that it's a UFO watching her. Yeah, okay. for sure. Gotcha. And that was, I don't love drones. Um, like I just something I, I partially because I feel like I just miss shaky helicopter stuff. Yeah. Um, and then this just felt like, I mean, partially we're a small, smaller movie, but I like the idea that, especially when it's just like straight dead over top of her, um, that it does have a little bit of, of like, oh, we're just tracking you. Mm, yeah. Gotcha. So that like having that the intention, that's it's great that you felt that way. The intention was definitely that every time that happens in the movie, because it happens later when she's in the bus and all these other things. Um, but wanting it to feel like, yeah, it's just smack dab over watching. Yeah. Gotcha. Hmm. Very cool. I um I know a lot of attention has been talked about in terms of the the one line of dialogue and kind of like that that being an interesting aspect of it. I'm fascinated to know what the day was like when you shoot that line like in the sense of like you know it's you know it's the one line you know that it ha- it's almost like uh when you when someone says the title of a movie in a movie you know right. that's coming or something like that but in this sense you got one line and she, so I, I just wonder what the emotions were when you're doing something like that like you do the, there's a there's a certain weight that comes along with that knowing that it's the one line um what was that perspective what do you remember that being uh, you know, on that day funny. It's funny. It's like, I think because Caitlin is not quiet in the whole movie, it felt less um, like she's screaming and screeching and, and crying. Like she's so vocal in the movie that it didn't really jump out as like, this is the line. Like it was funny. The thing that jumped out more would be like when another actor would come to set. Cause for so much of the movie, there isn't. And then that would be like the weird we, we'd have to wrap our heads around like, oh, there's like another like <laughs> person in the movie that we yeah. have to point the camera at kind of thing. So it was that was more the like, oh, there's a person here <laughs> as opposed to the line. Like, I don't remember the line being um, like a big, a big deal, but it would be like a big like a, like a second actor would show up and then it'd be like, oh, shit, there's another actor here. Like, what do we do? Mm. How many takes? Yeah. Did you remember how many takes you did on the line? Oh, probably like one or two. Yeah. Mm. It, it's Caitlin. It's like, you're like, that's good. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> it really is. It's so, um, wow. It's so, and like, it's also like, you know, just cause we were booking so fast, it was like, you know, uh, I think if I had my, you know, I'd love to be Fincher, uh, and just <laughs> going forever. Um, but like usually if I hit like three takes, like my AD's just like, what the fuck are you doing? Like we have to go. <laughs> How many um, days did you shoot, Brian? It was, I can't remember exactly. I, in my head, I want to say like 36, but I know we, we lost a bunch of time because of weather. And then the studio was really cool. And they gave us a little bit of time on mm. the back end to kind of fill in the gaps as, as best we could. So I don't remember like what exactly it was. I know it was under 40 and over 35 so it's in in that in that realm gotcha. 37 no, that would be really poetic <laughs> <laughs> um brian you you mentioned you know people starting to make tiktoks and videos like it's out yeah. now at the time we're talking about it which means you sort of put it out there and people take it in and interpret it uh how they choose to do it and, and the reason i bring that up is because uh, i've seen the film twice now the second time i watched it i watched it with my girlfriend and her whole family uh oh. and when the movie was over Everyone kind of started interpreting what they thought the ending meant, which surprised me because to me, when I watched it, it was very definitive. Like, oh, X, Y, and Z, like this is what happened. And then once people started having conversations, I was like, well, okay, that's interesting. So I'm sort of curious uh, in regards to hearing people's interpretation, reading, like, do you ever read things and go, well, fuck, that's not right. Yes, that's right. That's, and are you, are you one to give definitive answers? Yeah, I try not to, because I do think it's fun, Um, but there is a definitive answer answer that's correct um <laughs> uh because and and i don't i think I, I, we really wanted to play fair with the audience so it's you know i think the thing that throws people for a loop is there's like a dissolve t- and that feels like a jump in time forward and that's it's it's so it's the only time in the movie that we really leave caitlin for a little bit and then mm-hmm. kind of come back to her and i think people just project a lot of things happening in that gap um Mm -hmm. but even that you know 
it was like, well, we don't use the dissolve at other times in the movie. We, you know, it was like, we got to really be specific about, you know, if this happens, this is what we've seen happen before. Um, but at the same time, it's, it's cool to see people have fun with the ending or, or really struggle with the ending. <laughs> Cause it is like, um, like I've seen, I've got a couple like really angry tweets about the end and they're <laughs> long. <laughs> and part of me, what's the most that. wrong someone has been so far? Um, well, I really, I'll, I don't like when people think that it's not Caitlin in the, like a couple people oh, have interesting. push that it's not, it's not Bryn or it's like mm-hmm. a, it's, it's not her free will mm. kind of thing. Um, mm-hmm. and I'm like, what would be the purpose of that ending? I don't, I don't know. Um, like, like, well, like, I, I just don't know. Like, it's like, what is the. I think that my thing is just like if you can justify why that why the ending is there and it makes mm-hmm. sense it it makes sense but some of the, some of the endings I'm like why would I spend five minutes to think that doesn't have anything to do with any if it's not Caitlyn then like who gives a fuck sure I will say there's a moment where Caitlyn has <laughs> hey, a wake there, up there's moment. that one f bomb there there. <laughs> Caitlyn has a wake up moment uh, and yeah. my wife and I looked at each other and we were like don't fucking do this don't. Don't tell me it's all right. a dream. I don't want. <laughs> Please don't. And we, do that. We, and we play with. We like the idea that it was like let's play with it for again. Like it would be very dorky. But even like that, like we like you know Aaron, our, my DP. I was just like make this the like cheesiest fucking thing you could possibly do. Like I was like I want I want there to be nine million player. Like just like we just we're trying to be as like uh, not goofy but like. We want again wanting to play fair, wanting to be like in that scene, like she has like a moment where it's like, oh, wouldn't this be nice? And then I think when she realizes what's going on in that scene, um, you know, it's a little bit of the like, do you want steak or do you want to go back to the real world? Yeah, um, right, right. <laughs> and but like also wanting to play fair with the logic of for some people, or you know, there we see other people in the movie that are that did not kind of come to that realization and it's like yeah that would be a great a great life um mm-hmm. and so wanting to play fair with caitlin where it's like she has all of her memories and you know you can have a little bit of the where is this movie going but it's it's a very short 30 second like we're yeah. not we're not we don't go down to like seven minutes later we're <laughs> it's funny, right. we, we actually redid a little bit of that in our pickup day because we went so far overboard and we weren't like full full david lynch basically and had um hell yeah the, the collinses were also there and they were like really nice to caitlin and then she was really freaked out and they kept popping like coming at her from like other like non-existent angles with like trying to see if she was okay um and uh it got like a little too distracting for the the mod stuff to to land because you were just like everything is crazy Mm -hmm. um but originally it was even crazier and we kind of pulled it back just so it'd be like that you could just focus on on the emotion yeah All right. I have to ask you about this um, because we're thrilled that the movie is is getting out there and people are able to see it. Um, it's on Hulu, obviously, for people who want to stream it. Um, because of that, it comes with two commercial breaks. Um, I don't know. Are you, you able to you don't pay for the I, I guess if you don't pay for the yeah, for the premium service. Do, are we're you on a to... podcast, Brian? No, we don't pay for the premium Hulu. <laughs> <laughs> I, actually, I have not watched it yet. <laughs> so <laughs> you should. Well, it's I really good. It, that's why I wanted to I ask you. Yeah. Can you negotiate at all? Like when they arrive? Because yeah, your it, movie is such a build of tension. A couple of people have brought it up and I probably should have thought about it. I didn't. And I also don't think I would have won because I know in the limited conversations I've had, not even with Hulu, but just because I, I know every all, all the streamers are adding commercials now. It's like they have the data that's like if it's in the middle of a good moment, people are less inclined to leave mm. as opposed to if it's like your typical commercial break thing, like I, I think they're they I think they have the data that shows that a lot of people were like, do you want to keep watching this? Like when it happens, mm. like I like a fade out. Here's the sure. commercial as opposed sure. to 
mid dialogue or, or mid thing and they just throw it in your face. You're kind of like, well, I have to see what happens, but it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's dorky. But I, I don't think uh, maybe the next one, they would care what I think. But I think specifically they would have been like, you'll lose viewers if you put them in the graceful places that they should okay. be. Well, I'll tell you, when both of them arrived, my wife and I both were like, ah, fuck. <laughs> Come on. I, 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 are, we, I, are they, did, I, I, I don't know if they're the exact same spots for everybody. I'd be curious. That's too. a good question. So yeah. they come, the, the first one I know for sure comes um, right after her car doesn't start and before she takes a shower. Um, That's so not it's, too bad. Not too bad. Not a bad break. With that one. You're like. The second one, I don't remember, but, but it's still early and then there's still plenty of plenty of movie after that so i think someone told me one of them was like like smack dab in the middle of an action scene mm. um and was just kind of like you you've got to talk to them and i was just like i think that's where they like it like you kind of gotta go well mm. what happens when she falls off the cliff you know you can you know they i think they they enjoy that crude interruption but mm -hmm. You know, the okay. groans uh, that I got from my girlfriend's family when they all collectively realized that I don't pay for the premium Hulu like that, that, that really backfired in a way that I did not rookie. expect. <laughs> I did not expect that to be one of the talking points when the movie was over was that Jake doesn't pay for premium Hulu. I, uh, I'll tell you the truth. I, um, is it's a funny story. I, I, year, a couple years ago, so I probably don't have the same deal anymore as where this is leading, but, um, I had a meeting at Marvel and <laughs> Uh, I probably shouldn't say this, but it's it's funny. They had a meeting at Marvel and they were like, are you interested in this character? And I said, I have no idea who the fuck that is. <laughs> I, and it was honest. And it, the show came out. It's it's awesome. But I, I won't say what it was because I just did not know. And I, I messed up and said I didn't know who it was. And then they were like, are you interested in a three-year subscription to Disney Plus Hulu? And they had like a coupon. <laughs> and they were just like, He's not our guy. He's not getting this. But we, you know, if he pays this discounted rate, like we could get a subscriber for the show. And I was like, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> and so they were just like, thanks, thanks for coming. Thanks for subscribing. And I was like, no, no worries. It's, it's like getting your ticket validated. You're parking. <laughs> you're parking on it. Here you go. Here's three like, years like, of like, Disney Plus. I think a lot of the times when it's stuff like that, like they want to tell you in the room, and then probably people are just like, you know, fucking course. I, I I love this character. It was a character I just had genuinely not heard of, even though I'm I'm a nerdy white guy. Um, and then they instantly were just like, well, it's not going to be you that gets this job, but we have this second offer for you, which is you know, hundred dollars <laughs> off the three tiered thing or whatever. And I was like, great, I'll take it. <laughs> uh, Brian, we could talk to you all day, man, but we're out of time. I really appreciate you oh, coming no on. Oh, of course. This was so fun. This was a blast, man. We love spontaneous and we love this movie and we're going to be beating the drum for it for a long time. Oh, I appreciate so it, guys, thank you. All right, brother. We'll see you on the next time. All right, take care. We want to thank Brian for coming on the show, of course, and our good friends at 20th Century Studio for making this interview happen. Something we pushed for, again, to be able to want to talk spoilers for this fantastic movie, a movie that, I mean, you know, it's October now. A few amazing things are coming down the pipeline, but if this movie isn't on my top 10 for the year, I would be stunned. It would mean that the last three months of this year are truly outstanding to knock this one down because I love everything about what Brian did with this film. It you know, comes off a, a bit as a home invasion movie in the beginning, but established itself really early as an alien invasion film. And then it just goes to deliver all of the things that you want from an alien story, there's, there's often times where you're like, show me the creature, I wanna see what this is, and the filmmaker's hiding it in the shadows, but you get incredible interaction between Caitlin Deaver's character uh, and the aliens that are stalking her. You wanna find out why they're stalking her. You often ask questions in a movie like this of what's going on around the town, and this movie answers that. And then my biggest one was, all right, now I want to go into the spaceship. And when No One Will Save You does that, it delivers so hard on, you know, what had become sort of a Spielbergian sort of uh, E.T. Close Encounters type movie goes hard sci fi into the Denis Villeneuve, you know, type explorations of what this spacecraft might look like and and the type of influence that they're having on her. The, I mean, some of the sequences in this movie are just un completely unforgettable um, when the creature is coming towards Caitlin's mouth and you know the impact of what those creatures are going to do to each person. It's it's horrifying. Uh, and there's a great 
screenplay page that was making the round on social media of the way that Brian puts all the notes of how the characters feel and how he wants the audience to feel. Because as we've discussed in the interview, and as you probably know at this point, there's only one line of dialogue uh, in this movie and how impactful that line of dialogue is. But there's also so much amazing character work that's being done. Obviously, the the grief that, that Caitlin is carrying around with her uh, for things that have happened in the film and and the way that that pays off is is just truly remarkable. It's and just the cinematography, I can't say enough about. I mean, it honestly throws back to it looks like the late 70s, early 80s Spielberg, but yet with, you know, all the flourishes that come with modern tools. Um, some of the sequences are just so beautifully rendered. And uh, I'm incredibly impressed at what Brian was able to do with this. The only thing I lament is that, you know, it's not getting a full theatrical push um, because I, I do think this would be the type of movie that you'd want to see with the crowd uh, and on the biggest screen possible. But I love the fact that it's on. Uh, Hulu right now, even though it has commercial breaks, which does disrupt the, the flow of the movie just a little bit. But um, Brian addressed that in the interview, as you guys uh, have listened to. And uh, it still doesn't strip away from the fact that I would highly recommend this movie. You guys need to go uh, show it to friends, you know, tell everybody about it. Make sure they go see No One Will Save You uh, as quickly as they can. So Brian can continue to make movies like this. Thank you so much again for coming back on the show uh, on Friday. We're going to have a full episode of Real Blend. We have uh, another great guest joining us. It's uh, Nanachka Khan, who is the director of a great slasher film comedy that I've been raving about for the past couple of weeks called Totally Killer. Uh, she has some experience with sitcom work and she's transitioning over into horror and does a bang up job, uh, joins the show to talk to us about putting that film together and why it is so much fun for you guys to uh, to anticipate. So join us on Friday for Totally Killer. We'll be back uh, with more episodes of Real Blend. Make sure you hit subscribe, turn on your notifications and we will see you here soon. <laughs>